Assalamu alaikum. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, we thank him for his coming and we thank him for his true servant and apostle, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, I am Brother Shah Allah Shabazz, a student and a teacher of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. I am making this recording in response to a comment that was made under one of my videos. And the comment, my response to that comment was, was deleted mysteriously. Um, I know that YouTube has a reputation for deleting comments and contents and demonetizing videos that don't necessarily meet with their quote unquote community guidelines. So it's pretty much at their discretion, you know, what they want to leave up there and what they don't want to leave up there. When I went up to check the comment to see if there were any edits that needed to be done to the comment, I had noticed that it was erased. So, I wanted to respond to the brother's comment formally, um, verbally, because the comment was one that was germane to the course of, or my course of action or inaction over the last several years. Now, let me see if I can pull the brother's comment up, and if I can't get it up, um, quickly enough what I'll do is I'll paraphrase what the brother said but I want to read it so that we um, pretty much have uh, understand where this video was coming from alrighty okay I got it right here the comment was from a brother by the name of Salim Muhammad and it was under my video commentary on the importance of history and the brother asked me brother Shabazz when you are given the kind of when you are given the knowledge that you possess and express do you not feel that you should express it more we have enough misinformation and our people are suffering from division and false worship we must get back to real teachings and not people worship what are you going to do how is it as so many brothers say they are following the teachings of the honorable Elijah Muhammad and are so divisive we must put our egos aside and go forward that was the brothers comment under the video and there's there's a lot to this question, to this comment, and, I, and I'm going to unpack and answer this comment to the best of my ability, and I pray a lot that my response is to his satisfaction, and that the brother who, who put the comment up there is listen, will, will listen to this, and will find my, my answer to be satisfying as well, and those who may have you know similar thoughts and have asked similar questions that the answer may be satisfactory to you um, let me begin by addressing the first part where he says brother Shabazz when you are given the knowledge that you possess and express do you not feel that you should express it more well, I answered this question um, in the comment um, and I'm, I'm going to restate what I expressed to the brother. I am um, a teacher of passion. And my passion for Islam and my passion for knowledge and, and, and the subject matter, history, law, uh, economics, is an, is, is an unquenchable thirst. 
is insatiable. And I love to read. I love to study. I spend a great deal of my time doing so. I write a lot. And I, I consider myself to be a, a man who is devoted to the pursuit of knowledge. This is, by and large, the defining attribute of my life, the pursuit of knowledge. And I love to teach. It's not that I don't love to teach. It's just that I am driven by passion. And when I don't have an audience to teach to, it's very difficult for me to muster the necessary mojo, <laughs> for lack of a better word, to, to teach in, in a manner which, which I feel is sufficient to convey not only the wisdom that Allah has blessed me to attain, but also the inspiration that is intricate, or should I say innate, in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is why you may hear me teach every other month or so, or some or once every every ninety days, and you'll hear a crowd in the background. That's because I I'm I'm in a temple somewhere. Where I've been invited to speak, and I'll come in and I'll teach to to an audience. But for me to just make recordings without there being an audience is a very difficult thing for me to do. Now I've done it before. Don't get me wrong, but they they never come out the way that. I like them to come out. And that's part of the reason why you don't hear me teaching as often as I used to. Um, the reason why I don't have an audience, well, that's a, that's a pretty long history. Um, I, I, I'll say it like this. Um, not to deprive anyone of anything. Because I feel as if I owe my audience somewhat of an explanation. Um, I have consistent listeners on my channel, people that have always been supportive of my lectures and, and the work that I was trying to do, even if it was just a comment here, a word of encouragement. Um, I always wanted more from people in terms of attendance and showing up and helping to push the actual program. But words of encouragement are, are definitely something that, that I appreciate. And it feels good to to know that there are people out there that are actually listening to something that I took time to prepare. Um, all praise is due to Allah. I um, was just, just, just briefly, so you understand better. Um, I, I registered in the Nation of Islam under Minister Farrakhan in uh, Temple or Muhammad's Mosque number seven back in 2007 and um, I was there for a little while for about a year and, uh, and a half and um, I left it wasn't it, it just it wasn't for me um, I and even more so now than before but I always felt like that environment was was too was too cookie cutter it was too robotic it didn't afford one the 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 liberty to think and to to um, to express honest opinions and I'll give you an example briefly of, of what I'm talking about um, one day I was in a, a study group in the mosque and the question had been posed is, is do you believe that uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is physically alive. Now, this is a loaded question, right? Because obviously, most people in the mosque are going to say yes because that's the, the 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 prevailing you know belief. That's the canon in the mosque. So, most people aren't going to challenge that because they don't want to deal with the consequences of you know an answer in the negative will give. So. I'm just a different kind of brother, you know, so when <laughs> when they asked me, do I believe it? I said, no, and 
brothers, you know, they had, you know, the predicted response. And uh, one sister was acting like uh, she caught the Holy Ghost. She was really, really upset by me, you know, objecting to that false belief that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is still physically alive. I call it a false belief because that's that's what it is. It's just not true. And and um, you know, just just one example of, of of the kind of environment that 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 was, and it just wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. I'm I'm a free spirit, you know. I mean, I I have Islam is is not Islam is freedom. You know, there are, there are some very basic fundamental tenets and laws that Muslims must obey. But those laws are very few, right? You have five fundamental principles, right? You must, you know, we, we, we strive to eat one meal a day. You know, we strive to fast 72 hours out of every month. There are certain things that we believe as followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. There is no God but the Son of Man, right? Uh, we believe that the Caucasian white man is, is, a, is a descendant of Yaqub's grafted people and that these people uh, underwent a 6, 000, a 600 year grafting process and became something other than original and these are the people that the scripture refer to and Allah and God in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and his messenger referred to as the devil right these are certain some of the things that we believe right so there are certain things, but once you start getting into extracurricular activity, a lot of times people will start adding things to the basic core stuff because they want followers for themselves and they start putting believers in a straight jacket, right? And then they got to worry about uh, uh, what this minister said and what that minister said and how I have to adhere to this and I, have to, I don't have to adhere to anything that somebody says. Only thing I have to adhere to as a Muslim is the five basic fundamental principles of Islam. That's what makes me a Muslim. Now, if I say I'm FOI and I'm a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, now, yes, there are certain things that I, I must believe as an FOI in order to remain in good standing as fruit of Islam. But other than that, which are very few things, right, come to the temple, pay charity, Right? Uh, uh, make sure that I'm in good standing. Right? Make sure I'm not running around here messing around with, 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 uh, with sisters and, you know, uh, trying to, you know, run up in every skirt. You know, the Islam is a very simple thing. It's not a difficult thing to practice. But my point is that once you down you, you cover the basics. You know, Islam is a liberating thing. Don't tell me I can't think for myself. Don't tell me I can't have an opinion. Don't tell me I got to agree with every dot that's teed, every I that dotted, because that's just a lie. That's falsehood. You can't possibly believe like that. That's not even possible. And anybody that tells you that is being dishonest. Because human beings don't function that way. That's contrary to human nature for you to suspend all logic, all reason, you suspend, you suspend everything, and, and you don't even think for yourself. That's not, I mean, that's just not an environment for me. And I came to that conclusion very early. And it's funny because, you know, in my dealings with brothers in different camps and, you know, being an inquisitive brother, you know, I used to travel with the Allah team at that time. And um, brothers would, you know, we would go, and, and, and at the time, you know, there was brothers on the Allah team that were not with Minister Farrakhan, that was one of the things that was very attractive about the Allah team is that it had brothers from different camps in it, and these brothers, we all came together, right, to defend the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and, and naturally the brother um, who we referred to at the time was more popularly known then as True Islam. Today he's, he's more popular, popularly known as Dr. Wesley Muhammad, right? He was, you know, obviously the, the, the leading scholar of the bunch. And, and, you know, I give him his credit. The man is brilliant. When it comes to what he knows, he knows it. Right? So he was, he was the man out front. But the Allah team wasn't just him. It was other brothers and, and other brothers from different camps. And, and, you know, you get into that environment and you start asking questions. 
So, you know, why isn't everybody with Farrakhan? You know, that you know, you start asking questions. Now, I already had questions because of the whole Wallace thing, you know. I didn't I didn't like the way they played that in Chicago. You know, I, my, my position was always Wallace is a hypocrite. That's bottom line. I, there's no justifying what he did. And that's my position. It's my position today. It was my position then. And when, when I saw, you know, the way that they handled it over there, I just disapproved of that. You know, but I kept that to myself because I felt, you know, that, all right, it's one thing, you know, I'm not going to break rank behind it. But, you know, you start asking questions and then you start to get into studying a little bit of the history. And I started to get into learning certain things and started to realize that, oh, there's a bigger picture here. That is more than meets the eye to this little wild, this wildest thing, right? And the more that I learned, the more uncomfortable I became. And, you know, I had, you know, a little bit of integrity about myself. So I wasn't going to remain somewhere where I knew that, hey, man, this, you know, this, this, this thing here, man, it's not, it's not for me. It's not... I, 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 it's just not jiving with me, man. I, I can't. I'm not going to follow Wallace, whether I'm following him directly or indirectly. I ain't come here for that. I came here to follow the Ambi Lodge Muhammad. That's who I wrote my letter to, allowing the person and master for Rod Muhammad in care of the Ambi Lodge Muhammad. That was my intention when I came in here, and that's my intention today. And thank you very much. You know, I cleaned my act up in the mosque. You know, I, I, you know, my, my life turned around as a result of that experience, and I'm grateful to Allah for that. Thank you, salam alaikum, and that's it. You know, so I moved on. Now, you know, now this is me talking. Now, you know, we're talking, um, you know, uh, ten years later, right? I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that quiet when I left. And those of you who know my history, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you know, wasn't that quiet? <laughs> Not at all. But it's, this is just me speaking 10 years later, 10 years more mature, looking at things from, from, a, from a, I guess, a, uh, a grown man's lens, right? Versus just some, much, you know, immature young fella, man, who, who was pissed the hell off because I felt like I was swindled. Um, anyway, moving right along. So come out the mosque and, um, you know. Make a long story short, I ended up with the brother, brother Eric in Atlanta for a little while. Um, some, uh, you know, disagreements with the brother. You know, I don't have any malice in my heart for him, man. I wish him well. You know, he's really a good brother. You know, people see the brother on the rostrum and they form opinions. If they don't know him off the rostrum, then it's kind of hard to get a a, a, a broad picture on and, and, a, and a more honest view of, of the brother. He's he, he really is a good brother. Um, you know, he's the kind of brother that would take his shirt off, off his back for you, you know, um, and, and I know he would because I've seen him do it. Um, I'm not just speaking hype in hypotheticals. You know, the brother is a very good brother. Um, but I, I don't agree with the brother, you know, on, on certain things. There's some tactical things that I don't agree with him on. And um, that it's just it just is what it is. I don't wish the brother no harm, no malice, nothing. I just I just don't agree with with certain things, so I'm just doing my, my thing, right, so um, he and I, we, we, um, we, we went our separate ways back in 2014, and, um, and I started teaching in Harlem for a little while, and, and um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's when it really started to pop hard, because we had people coming out, um, I had um, made the connection with the brothers and sisters in Detroit, and I was being fed a lot of Supreme Minister John Muhammad stuff, and I was putting a lot of the stuff up at the time, and, you know, that was creating a buzz, because, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, we're so, so bankrupt as far as um, the knowledge of the history of the nation is concerned that a lot of people didn't even know Supreme Minister existed, or they, and if they did know, they never really had a chance to hear him teach, and I said, man, here's this jewel, this, this, this treasure, you know, a man who, who was directly, you know, connected to the root historically, you know, and people haven't had the opportunity to hear this man teach. So I started putting his stuff up and, you know, we going up, to, you know, we coming up to 135th Street at the YMCA, man, you know, we teaching. I went up there and, and, and sat down with the two brothers that were up there. We, we had a little unity going on and, uh, you know, brothers start coming out. But what happens, you know, you start putting the law on brothers, man. And, uh, you know, you start realizing, man, brothers ain't really soldiers the way they say they are, you know. 
And and that's not no, you know, on the two brothers that one of them is seventy years old, you know, the other one's in the sixties. I mean, what what can you really expect from brothers that old, right? I mean, the mere tennis, the fact that they held the fort down to me was like it's like a, oh man, this is an admirable thing, right? This is admirable. These brothers been up there all these years, all praises due to Allah, but I didn't really expect much soldiering from them brothers. They come to find out, you know, they was out there consistently. You know, they were the ones that was out consistently, had a few other brothers coming out. You know, you start telling saying, listen, brother, we need you to report to the temple at such and such time for inspection. Now, I'm coming up in there. I had a captain. Now, now, this brother was late all the time. Every day, I'm on the dime, late. You can wind your watch to it, right? I'm talking about color people time. And FOI don't do color people time. And for why don't do CPT? Right? So finally, you know, after a little while, it gets to a point where, listen, I'm the minister, brother. I'm not supposed to be drilling the men. I'm not supposed to be inspecting. I'm doing everything in here. I'm keeping the records. I'm coming home, man, typing up spreadsheets. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I'm, I'm not, listen, I'm, I'm the minister. I'm not the secretary. I'm not the captain. Right? But what happens? Finally, you know, I got, I got, I got overwhelmed. You know, burnt out. You know, even the brothers that I had that were younger, they were new brothers. They were converts. You know, we had to come in. I, you know, I had a few converts in the temple. One Sunday, we had about 29 people out. You know, I mean, that's a miracle. <laughs> 135th Street, for God's sake. You know, I mean, you had 29 people out of 135th Street. That's like having 300 people at the mosque when Farrakhan speaking. So we had it popping. And we had it popping so much that one time we were standing on 135th Street in Atlantic selling Muhammad Speaks newspapers. And the brothers from down on 127th Street, Muhammad's Mosque number 7, they put a squad up on 135th Street and walked past us, about 25 of them. And we're, you know, we're a small group. We had about four or five brothers out there. Gave them the greetings. They gave us the greeting. We knew what they was trying to do. But, you know, a little intimidation. You know, nigga stuff. You know. I'm going to call it what it is, nigga stuff, you know, but you know, whatever, I'm a civilized man, salam alaikum brother, kept it moving, right, anyway, because of the incompetence of, of some of the laborers that I had in that, in that temple, I started reaching out to other brothers, and that was a fatal mistake, because when I reached out to them other brothers, I allowed people a window into what was going on, but my thing was, what am I supposed to do, I'm burnt out here, I want to get this thing up. We're finally making progress. We had brothers literally coming in there that were recovering drug addicts. You know, these are the people that Muhammad was saving years ago. And we were starting to get work done in this place. Real work. I mean, we were talking about getting another spot so we can have FOI classes on Saturday mornings. And come bring the MGT. We started getting some MGT out too. Then what happened? There's a word. And Brother Eric, if you're listening to this, you're going to laugh when I say this. There's a word. What's that word? It starts with an N. I think you know what word I'm thinking about. Yeah, that word. And, um, yeah, temple fell apart. Brother shot to get slick, man, you know. Brother's... So I had a stage a coup d'etat on the brother and uh, undermined my authority as the minister in the temple and set me up as some kind of puppet, man, you know. It's a military dictatorship with me being the puppet spokesman for the military dictatorship. You know, I wasn't going for that. I wasn't going for that, you know. Listen, brothers, honestly, Farrakhan was the best game in town when I left, you know. And as crazy as they gotten over there now, He's still the best game in town. So why would I leave Minister Farrakhan, right? And, and all that madness that was going on over there. And the insanity that I saw, man, they, they, they hadn't even started with the Scientology stuff when I left. That came later. When I, when I heard about that, that was just confirmation for me. So okay, well, you know, I did the right thing. But why would I leave there to come fall in behind somebody else's madness? Without the perks. I could have stayed over there with Farcom, you know, and, and, and had the perks. But that's not who I am. That's not who I took my oath of allegiance to. 
See, I wrote a letter to Allah and the person and master for Rod Muhammad in care of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And that's it. That's it. Islam is not a burden. It's not a burden, brothers. It's not a burden, sisters. It isn't. It's very simple. Allah's religion is simple. It's supposed to be simple. Because it's supposed to be simple because a child is supposed to be able to understand it. And a child is supposed to be able to practice it. Now naturally we mature within the simplicity of Islam. But it's not supposed to be a burden. Don't let no one put something on you. That's outside of the law of Islam. Because now, now you're entering into the, into the realm of a, of a relationship between a pimp and a whore. Right? And I've seen a lot of brothers get pimped in Islam. And I'm not going to be one of them. And I don't recommend you be one of them. All praise is due to Allah. So anyway, after that, you know, the temple fell apart. Came back around, you know, a few years later. Try to rebuild it. Try to restructure it. What, what, what happens, you know? Uh, back to square one, doing the same thing again. Trying to get everything together. You know, drilling. You know, spreadsheets. I'm like, goodness, man. I mean, what I got to do to find it? Competent help around here. I gotta put. I gotta put an ad up on Career Builder. You know, what I what I have. I am a recruiter by by trade. You know, but I recruit for employers. <laughs> you know, like you know, you gotta be registered FOI and MGT to be a, a laborer. You know, we gotta get through a conversion process first. Not like I could just put an ad up on Indeed. You know what I'm saying? And hire just anyone with the qualifications. You know. So we get to that again, and then, you know, the same group of, of, of misfits, you know, they, 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 they come around again, you know, trying to cause trouble among the righteous people, and, you know, I just said, the hell with it, man, after a while, I got tired, I got sick and tired, so I said, the hell with it, man, it ain't worth it, I'm neglecting my family, I'm neglecting my household, you know, taking money out the house to support this, and next thing you know, man, it's like, I mean, it, what's, where's, where's the return on this investment here? There's no return, just headaches, heartache, heartburn. For what? I still got a family to raise. You know? I still got a family to protect, to provide for. I can't spread myself thin like this. Because for me to spread myself thin doing this and take away from my home, knowing that charity begins in the home, that my first and primary post as a man is as a father, as a husband. Right? That's that's first and foremost. That comes before anything. Because if that's not covered, I can't step outside and begin to do other things. That's neglecting my responsibility as a man. So finally, I just said, man, the heck with it. I, you know, what? What am I supposed to do? It's not like I'm getting any support. A few comments here and there. Yeah, no question. That's beautiful. Praise be to Allah. Like I said in the beginning, but. I mean, I'm talking about support. That brother's coming out. You know, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, man. I mean, the work don't go nowhere. You know, I went on a hiatus, frustrated, angry. But the work don't go nowhere. Look at this thing, man. You know, I'm, I'm on a, um, I don't, I don't really do social media like that. But, you know, I'm on, I'm on a, um, you know, people, you know, obviously people I know do social media. And, um, you know, this Nipsey Hussle thing, I never heard of the brother personally. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in my 40s, man. Like, you know, hip-hop to me is uh, Eric B. and Rakim. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nas, nah, Illmatic. Like, that's hip-hop to me. I don't really know too much about it. Now, that's not to dis, you know, speak disparaging about what people do today. It's just not my thing. Obviously, I'm older, you know. Um, so I never heard of the brother, but I seen the way that people were, you know, treating him on social media. I did a little, you know, did a little, uh, you know, background, you know, preliminary research on the brother, you know, found out he did some good work in the community, et cetera, et cetera, right? But people just 
praising this brother like like he's second coming of Jesus or something, you know. And these same brothers, man, you know, I'm, I'm sitting at a red light the other day. What do I hear? I got murder on my mind. Some, you know, 808 kick, boom, boom. The thing is like a narcotic, you know, wong, wong, wong. The brother, you look, you're sitting and looking at the brother, man. Then the brother looks like a zombie. The bass is just boom, 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 boom. I got murder on my mind. I got murder. It's like the Manchurian candidate. You know what I'm saying? Like the brother's being programmed. And I'm looking. And in my mind, I'm thinking. I'm like, yo. Excuse the yo. You know, I, pardon the slang. I got a little loose there. But I'm thinking to myself. I'm like, this brother is probably one of them same brothers that was talking that Nipsey Hussle stuff on the internet. Treating him like he was Jesus Christ. And look at what he's listening to. He's listening to the same garbage that feeds the mentality that got that brother killed. These brothers are literally trapped inside of a matrix. And the work don't go nowhere. And I can't as FOI look at that. And turn a blind eye to it as if it doesn't exist. As if I don't have a responsibility. Because I do have a responsibility. My lessons teach me that. So we are. Let's let's get back to this brother's comment. I hope I answered that first part, brother. I, I took quite some time answering, but I felt like I needed to give a little background information in order to do the subject justice. So we have enough information misinformation in our people are suffering from division and false worship. We must get back to real teaching and not peace with people worship. That's that's one hundred percent right, my brother. Um, what are you going to do? This is a it's a good question. What are you gonna do, Brother Salim? What 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 are y'all gonna do? The ones that are listening in yeah, I can give you an answer. Obviously, I'm not going to give too much away on YouTube. Right? Because that's a really more of a strategy question. Um, but I can't turn my back on these, on these brothers and sisters. Um, because their blood is on my hand. That's what my lessons teach me. That's what our lessons teach us. I'll say this, brother. Years ago, people had greater attention spans. They were able to sit down and listen. Because our people most, like, came from the church, by and large. There wasn't all of this technology. And, and I've made this point. In other lectures before. So I'm not going to belabor it. But we really, really, really need. To go back to the drawing board. On some of our tactics. And our strategy. Because quite frankly. It's, it's outdated. I mean it's like. Not just. I mean it's. it's, it's I'll, to say it's outdated. Is, is such an understatement. That it's, it doesn't even do. What I'm trying to say justice. The messenger passed away physically, peace be upon him, 44 years ago. 44 years ago. The time between him meeting Master Farad Muhammad and passing in 1975 is the same amount of time that he's been gone. When the messenger passed away, We had eight tracks. For the younger people that's listening to this, you don't even know what an eight track is. Google it. And eight tracks. We have rotary phones. Right? Color television wasn't in everybody's house yet. I remember. Because when I was a little boy, we still had a black and white TV. And we had the bunny rat we had the bunny bunny rabbit ear uh bunny, bunny rabbit antenna. I don't know if you remember that. Some of you older brothers do. Brothers, old, other sisters do. Um, all of that has changed. All of that has changed today. 
and the world is faster. And these young people, they don't, they, they don't have, they don't have a moral sense like we had. We were wild. We did things. None of us were angels. But we knew the difference between right and wrong. And that's the difference. These kids are morally dead today. They don't know the difference between right and wrong. These kids, these excuse me, not kids, these young people today have been raised in an environment in a public school system where they think that it's okay for a boy to have a boyfriend. They think that's okay. That's common folk. In fact, it's so common that it's even in their music. Look at the way they dress. Look at their skinny jeans. Oh, they're missing his high heels. All these boys look sweet. And the sisters look butchy. They don't have no concept of marriage first, then children. That's taboo. You're talking upwards of 70 something percent, 72, 73 percent of black children born out of wedlock in, in the Hispanic community is something like 54 percent. I mean, that's unheard of. That's ungodly. And, and uh, I think it was Daniel Moynihan. I think that's his first name. Moynihan is his last name. He did a report back in the 19, I think 1964, and it was alarmed then 25 percent. A black children are born out of wedlock. He was ringing the alarm then. In the 60s. Imagine what he would say today. <clears throat> you still had separate schools back then. You know, boy Catholic school, girls Catholic. You don't have none of that. Everything's correct now. 44 years. <clears throat> and we're not just talking 10 years ago. We're talking decades. The people that were born when the messenger passed away are old enough to have grandchildren now. So what are we going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to be completely honest about the way things are done and I'm going to call it what it is. I've dated and a lot of us look like Civil War veterans. You know how they go and they, they dress up and they we go and reenact the Battle of Gettysburg? That's what we look like every Sunday. Like we're going to reenact the Nation of Islam. Tactics are outdated. Strategy is outdated. So the question becomes, how does one Update the tactics and update the strategy without infringing on the core tenets of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Because a lot of us are crazy. We think that, oh, you know, we don't sell newspapers and we find something else to do that's more effective. Right now, I'm not saying don't sell newspapers. Don't take what I'm saying out, out of context. I'm, I'm just using that as an example. That somehow you are a hypocrite and a heretic, which is preposterous. Because that has nothing to do with the doctrine. See, when you start changing doctrine, that's 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 when you're going into the into the in in, in, in stripping the heart of the teachings out and, and start. That's when you're changing the teachings. When you start dealing with doctrine, doctrinal issues. We're not dealing with doctrinal issues. We're dealing with tactical issues and strategy issues. How do we get the teachings to the people? In 2019, not in 75, not in 65. The way they did it then was effective. That's obvious. I'm talking about today. How do you reach this generation? And, and, and you can't ask these brothers, these older brothers. These older brothers are dinosaurs. they dinosaurs. They don't know the first thing about it. But the older, but the older brothers, they always want to knock the younger brothers down. The ones that got talent. I know I experienced it. You got a little talent, and brothers want to come up with every reason in the world why you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. He's Puerto Rican. He's not black. I get that. I get it. I'm Puerto Rican. I should. All right. All right. You want me to go teach Puerto Ricans? 
Listen, I had students. I was a five percenter for 15 years before I came in the temple. The majority of my students was brothers of Hispanic descent. Naturally, one that seeks its own level. But until one of you can step up to this restroom and I teach Shalom Shabazz, sit the hell down. Because I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing because it makes you feel uncomfortable. I didn't write my letter to you. I wrote it to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Excuse me, God in person in care of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And no disrespect to the elders. Because I don't want to make enemies of believers. That's not my intention at all. I love the believers. I love the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But you have to learn how to get out of the way. Old men for counsel, young men for war. There's going to come a time when I'm old and I pray a lot that I make it to that age or to that phase in life. And when that time comes, a lot permitting, then I pray a lot that I'm able to let go of the reins in peace and pass it on to a younger man than myself. But that day has not arrived yet because I'm not old. And some of you older brothers, you have to understand that these younger brothers, they are more connected. They're closer to the reality on the ground. When y'all were young, some of you, Chuck Berry was on the freaking radio. Let's be completely honest. And it may not even be that extreme. For some of y'all, it was the Delphonics. And for some of y'all, it was Blue Magic. Whatever the case may be. It was a long time ago. You don't know what's going on in 2019. Not the way some young brother 30 years old does. So you got to let the young do that thing. You have to stop being so restricted. That's part of the problem. Let me tell you something. You want to restrict. I'm going to use an economic. I'm an MBA. Right? I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't. I don't think that makes me better than anyone. But I'm an MBA. Yes. I did spend seven years in college. I studied a lot. Right. Right. I, I got degrees. I have degrees. I have a tremendous amount of formal education. Right? Like I said, I'm, I don't believe that to be something that makes me better than anyone. It doesn't. But what it did was expose me to certain information. Now, you know, I, being an MBA, I studied some economics. Right? And the way things work in economics is if you want a market or if you want your economy to thrive, the freer the economy is, the greater the production will be. The more you restrict an economy, the more you end up like Cuba. <laughs> with, with people still driving around in 55, 1955 Cadillacs and Chevys, right? Because they have restricted their economy. And the more you restrict your, your youth, the more you restrict them beyond the requisite restrictions of Islam. Islam does have restrictions, but you can't be excessive because once you do that, you begin to stifle their creative nature. And what you end up with is an entire populace of people who are so far beyond the t behind the times that some of these brothers think it's still the 70s, man. Stop Restricting these brothers. Let them free. Give them counsel. Give them guidance. Make sure that they stay correct. Make sure that they stay consistent with what Mr. Muhammad taught. And that they do not infringe on any of the laws of Islam. 
but let them free to be creative. Then you'll see results. How that looks, well, I'm not going to divulge any of my ideas on YouTube. That would be foolish. This is not a meeting between people I can trust. This is a public forum. So what are we going to do is the question. And a lot of it don't have to do with lectures on YouTube, brother. 99% of the work is off the radar. It's off the internet. It's in the local community. It's in the local community. It's showing up to, to events. Not just to push papers and push the program, but showing up to events. To give people the greetings and let them know that Muhammad's program is still here. Meet with the local community leaders and let them know that Muhammad's program is still here. <laughs> Make friends in all walks of life. Local business. Support black business. Support your own people. For my brown brothers and sisters, support your people. Support the bodega. Get your coffee from the bodega. Make sure it's quality. Don't get it from, from Starbucks and these the corporations in Seattle. They come into the hood. They take all of the resources out of the, out of the neighborhood. Yeah, they bring jobs. They employ people. You know, but that's not your people. That money's going back to Seattle. That's money. That money's going to the shareholders. That's not going to the local community. That's not, that's not circulating within the community like Black Wall Street where the dollar would circulate, what, seven or eight times before it left? I think it was even more than that. That's what you want to start doing. You want to start creating a, a, a local economy where the money circulates and the service and the products, everything circulates within the community. And then the money leaves once it's circulated eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times. But in order to do that, you have to start creating a network in your local community. You can't be so restricted that you're tied into the temple or the mosque and you don't deal with nobody unless they say, Assalamu alaikum. That's not the teachers. The teachers said friendship in all walks of life. Call on to the way of the Lord with your example and goodly exhortation. That's Quran. How did so many brothers <clears throat> say that they are following the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and are so divisive? We must put our egos aside and go forward together. Yeah, it, I, I agree, brother. I agree. Um, titles are very intoxicating, right? And... Uh, just like with any other bureaucracy, I mean, <laughs> it's going to be what it's going to be, man. People, people going to fight for titles, going to fight for power. Uh, it's going to be a power struggle. Uh, people are going to get so caught up in the titles that they forget that they're Muslims. And that's why the, the title was always brother minister, brother captain, not just captain. Because brother first, sister captain. Sister lieutenant, sister first, which means that, hey man, you're not, you're not above being removed. So certain things need to be, again, tactically, man, just outdated. Certain tactics have to be reevaluated because there's no way that somebody can just, like you're in a post and there's no accountability to the believers. You know, you're a trustee. This is, this is... The nation of Islam, like any other nation, is a trust. And the officials in the nation, now you go look up the word trust, the legal definition of what a trust is. Like a trust fund or a trust, uh, uh, what they used to call a Massachusetts trust, a common law trust, a business trust. You, you look up the word trust, you know your brother knows a little law. So I'm going to teach you something now. A trust, right? Is, is, is an item, a, a thing, right, that is 
that is that is set aside for a beneficiary and it's managed by what's called a trustee so in the nation the beneficiaries the people that are the inheritors of the trust of that thing that's put into a trust is the believers just like in the united states the trustee is the citizen no, not the trustee. The, the beneficiary is the citizen. The trustee is the person that manages the trust. Right? Now, if that person mismanages the trust, then the beneficiary has an obligation, a responsibility to, to remove that trustee and put someone in place that's going to do the job properly. I mean, this is common sense. So, yeah, you, you're going to have that, brother, a lot of divisiveness. And, you know, it's not just a theological thing. A lot of this stuff isn't theology. A lot of this stuff is political. Stuff, most of it is political more so than theology because you get the brothers in the room and we all say, yeah, I'm Elijah Muhammad. Yeah, I'm teaching the message to the black man. Well, we pretty much all agree on, on the same points, on the most important things we agree on. But it's the politics. See, you have a vacuum. But when the messenger passed away, he created a vacuum. And then the mismanagement by the trustees, Wallace and the family, and then later on the laborers, right? People making claims that just weren't true, taking believers off and deviating from the teachings off into something other than, than what the messenger taught, right? Those are all violations of the trust. And those of us who stepped away from the greater body of the nation of Islam, Bennett Wallace, early on, the Farrakhan, later on, or whomever, there's a vacuum of power. There's a political vacuum. So now, the issue is, how do you bring these elements together? And there's going to be some political science that has to be studied and brought to the table. So I'm in a stage in my studies now where I'm dealing with functional information. I, I read, I study some of the same things I've always studied. Right? Because you have to keep your foundation tight. But a lot of stuff that I've been reading lately addresses a lot of these issues that you're talking about here in these statements, brother. So I, I pray a lot that, you know, um, one day you and I can meet in person. And uh, maybe we can do some work together, you know, because that's what it's about, work. Um, changing that mentality. I got murder on my mind. You know, I ain't talking about murdering no, no, uh, no Asian at the Chinese restaurant, you know. Man, I'm not saying that's right. Hey, it ain't right to murder no one unless, you know, they, they've done something to warrant that kind of action but the murders an innocent person that's never right never right to harm a person the holy quran says that if you have harmed or taken the life of one innocent person it is as if you have killed all of humanity that's how that's the teaching of the holy quran i, I don't know what these 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 other people talking about quran says you cannot take the life of one innocent person but the point is that brother's not thinking about killing no arab in 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 the um Lucy spot when he murder on my mind, he talking about another black man, and this is an infection, man. This is this is I, I call it niggerism. That's what it is. That mentality, that culture, that's niggerism, and that's what we warring against today. Niggerism. So how are we gonna fight niggerism? That's the question we all need to be asking ourselves. And it sure as hell ain't by behaving like a bunch of niggas. You got to be unlike, not a like. A lot of these brothers, a lot of brothers, you know what I'm saying? I see young brothers putting bandanas on their head. Man, y'all look like a bunch of niggas. That's not how you combat niggerism. You have to be civilized, brother. Your heart may be in the right place. I don't question that. I don't know that. That's a law knows that. But you don't put no bandana around your head looking like a nigga on a street corner talking about Asalaamu Alaikum I'm going to follow the army Elijah Muhammad. Hell no. That's a 
That's an oxymoron. I said enough. I ain't even intend to go this long. I pray a lot that you listen this long. I love you. I love you all. I swear I do. Allah knows that. And I love the nation. All praise is due to Allah. Muhammad. As-salamu alaykum.